Badam! Bow! Hey, everybody! Last Outrider here with the next part of Who Are the Thousand Sons? We're going to get into Dreams, Wars, and Bloodshed. Amongst Ariman's countless atrocities, there are those that stand as true testaments to his subtlety, power, and ruthlessness. Amongst these are the Harvest of Calliope. Calliope was a world of lost knowledge. An entire planet given over to the archiving of records. From the earliest days of the Imperium, all the way to its uncertain present. Stacks of rotting parchment filled caverns extending far beneath its crust. Data spool stations ringed its orbits from pole to pole, and its cities sprawled around the index vaults. Every soul on Calliope existed for the archive. From the hunters who stalked vermin in the deep parchment stacks, to the scribes who fought for control of the hundreds of contradictory indexes. All were bound to the ecology of the archive. So it had been for a time since before any could remember, and so it seemed things would continue. Until something changed. A faction arose within the cast of indexers. This faction called for the unification of all indexes into an endlessly extended formula. They called themselves the summation. Where the idea had first come from, none were certain. But once it took hold, it bloomed like a flower in sunlight. The summation's power grew generation after generation until its rule of Calliope was uncontested. Centuries passed, and billions labored to further the summation's goal. At least, at last, they succeeded. On the day of the Emperor's ascension, in the High Hall of Indexes, a scribe wrote the final line of symbols to complete the formula. And in that instant, Calliope fell silent. When an imperial ship arrived at Calliope a decade later, it found a few starved people living amongst the dry corpses of the dead. None of the survivors could remember anything for more than a few seconds. Stranger still, the great archives were blank. Every data store, empty, and every page of parchment, bare. The only mark remaining to tell of the algorithmic seed Araman planted and then harvested millennia later was a single image hovering in the lost memoirs of the survivors blasted minds, the image of a figure in a horned helm, wreathed in a flame, stepping from a wound in the air. So let's summarize that for people. Araman took basically a database planet, a planet with a population of billions. Let's assume it was the earth, and seven billion people lived on it, and every man, woman, and child on the planet existed for one purpose, to catalog data and archive it. Araman then came up with a plan, which was obviously a, a, a spell or some, a ritual of some sort, that they worked on for generations. And when the final syllable was spoken, the entire planet, everything, was basically transferred to him. Not only every bit of data, but the, the minds of every person on the planet. Wiped. That's the type of information he has access to. 
<laughs> Try to wrap your brain around that one. The next one we're going to talk about is the death of Dionysus. Ahriman had long sought the skull of Lepidius, a dead hero of the Second Black Crusade, for reasons that remain his own. The skull, dipped in silver and engraved with 10,000 words of detestation, lay in the polar shrine city on Dionysus. A conspiracy to obtain the skull by guile had already failed. So Ariman turned to more direct means. Since the end of the scouring, countless billions have fought and died in the shadow of the Eye of Terror. For almost eight millennia, the remains of many of those honored dead lay on Dionysus. Heaps of charred bones the serene bodies of martyrs and the polished skulls of space marines all came to the mausoleum world. On the surface of Dionysus, the plains of bone extended from shrine city to shrine city and grew ever deeper with each passing year. The cities themselves were built from the skulls and bones of the most heroic dead. So sacred and revered was Dionysus that a dozen space marine chapters maintained honor guards and bastions on its surface. <coughs> Star fortresses ringed its approaches, and millions of troops stood stintinal over the skulls of those who had died to hold the darkness in abeyance. Across the reaches of space, Araman burned worlds and sent souls shrieking into the warp. As the murdered worlds spun into alignment with each other, they created an arcane pattern in the stars, with Dionysus at its heart. As the great design locked into place, Dionysus' son was pulled from reality leaving a howling wound in the sky of the mausoleum world. Blood and fire spread across the heavens. The bones of the dead howled the last thoughts of their lives. The rainbow fire crawled across the ossuary towers. Demons poured through the hole that had once been the sun tumbling onto the mausoleum world like falling stars. The defenders screamed as the children of chaos ate their souls. Amid the slaughter, Araman appeared, outlined in lightning, ringed by sorcerers and rubricae. Power rolled from the circle of sorcerers as they strode through the battle, killing the defenders and dissolving demons with arcane fire. The chapter honor guard came against him, but were reduced to ashes and silent screams with a gesture. Firebane, last warlord of Legio Ophicium, stood, strode into view. From its shrine of war, the cry of its war horns echoed across the damned world and its weapons burnt a path towards Araman's circle. Drawing together the power of his fellow sorcerers, Araman forced the war machine to its knees before pulling the core of its plasma reactor through its carapace. At last, Araman held the skull of Lepidus in his hand as the battle between men and demons raged around him. Raising the skull to his eyes, he found the one word he sought etched on the skull's surface. Letting the skull fall from his hand, he and his forces vanished, leaving the world of bones to the howl of demons and the cries of the dying. How's that? So, to summarize, he attacked that entire planet, 
had all of the planets and multiple solar systems line up in a certain arcane fashion, had the sun disappear, the actual star disappeared, and then demons rained down on the planet, all so that he could find one word out of 10,000 inscribed on this skull. That gives you an idea of what Araman is. Until next time, bye.